Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to talk about the power consumed by an RCL circuit. And it turns out that in an RCL circuit, even though there's three components, there's a resistor, there's a capacitor, there's an inductor, only one of those three components actually consumes power, consumes energy in the circuit, and that is the resistor. The inductor and the capacitor, they're basically just pure energy savers. They, they store energy and then they release energy and store energy and release energy. The inductor does that by building up a magnetic field and that magnetic field collapses back into the circuit and releases back the energy that it stored in the magnetic field. The capacitor does that by storing up charges on the capacitor and then the charges go back into the circuit. And so therefore, a pure capacitor and a pure inductor assuming that, you know, in, in theory, there's no resistance whatsoever in those components, then those do not consume any, um, any energy, only the resistor does. So there's two ways in which we can find the power consumed by an RCL circuit. The first one is simply using the equation that power is equal to I square R. Now, how do we handle that into this particular circuit? Well, it turns out the current in the circuit has to be the RMS current. We know that the current is constantly changing over time, so we want to use RMS current to do that. And so how do we find the RMS current? Well, IRMS in an RCL circuit is equal to the voltage RMS divided by the impedance. Now, the voltage RMS, if you have a, an oscillating voltage supply, and let's say there's a maximum voltage of 100 volts, we then take the voltage, 100 volts, multiply times the cosine of 45 degrees, or 0 0.707, that gives us RMS voltage. So take the RMS voltage divided by the impedance, and how do we find the impedance? Well, the impedance is equal to the square root of the resistance square plus the reactance square. Of course, knowing that the reactance is equal to X sub L minus X sub C. Usually the difference between the reactance of the inductor and the reactance of the capacitor. So in this case, that would be Z is equal to the square root of 200 squared plus 100 squared. Notice the units are ohms, and this would end up being, let me get my calculator. So 200 squared plus 100 squared equals, take the square root, that would be 223.6, uh, that would be ohms. And of course, we then take the VRMS divided by the resistance, and that gives us I squared. So this is equal to um, 70, 0.7 volts divided by 223.6 ohms. Let's do that real quick. Take the inverse of that times 70.7. And we had a current, so IRMS is equal to 0 0.3162 amps, which means that the power consumed in the circuit would be equal to 0 0.3162 amps. We have to square that times the resistance of 200 ohms. And so the power is equal to, we're going to square that number, times 200, and we get 19.99, or just about 20 watts. So that resistor in that circuit will consume 20 watts. The second way in which we can do that is to realize that the power is equal to the current times the voltage. Now, in this case, again, we should use RMS, but notice that in also here is that the current and the voltage in the circuit have a phase difference. There's a phase angle between them. So therefore, when we multiply them together, it's like a dot product. So in this case, the power is going to be the RMS current times the RMS voltage times the cosine of the angle between the two. It's like a dot product. And so in this case, we could say that the power is equal to IRMS, which is 0 0.3162 amps, times the voltage RMS, which is 70.7 volts, times the cosine of the phase angle, which we have over here, of 26.57 degrees. Remember that the phase angle of circuit is equal to the arctangent of the reactants divided by the resistance. All right, let's do that here. So we have point. 3162 times 70.7 times 26.57, take the cosine of that, equals, and sure enough, we get the power equals to 20 watts. Now, it turns out that sometimes instead of using IM, uh, RMS current and RMS voltage, we can use a maximum voltage. But remember that we have to adjust for that, so we can also say that the power is equal to one half I max times Vmax 
times the cosine of the phase angle. So if you only have the maximum value of the current and voltage, you can also find the power consumed in the circuit, but then you have to multiply that by one half to compensate for the difference between the maximum value of the current and voltage and the RMS value of the current and the voltage. But that's how you calculate the power consumed in an RCL circuit.